What's up everyone? So obviously by the title of this video, I'm going to be talking all about the Pluto Trigger, which I just want to thank Pluto so much for sending me this so that I can make a video about it. I'm so excited to talk about this because it is so, so cool. But I also just want to throw in that they are not paying me to talk positively about this at all. All opinions are my own. They just sent me this, which I'm so grateful for. I'm just gonna get right into it. So in the box you get the Pluto Trigger itself, a hot shoe mount which just screws right on there but I have it on there perfectly so I didn't want to take it off, a cable to connect it to your external flash, a laser which is so so cool, and then you get a USB charging cable for the Pluto Trigger itself and the laser. And then it comes with this little tiny carrying bag and this quick start pamphlet type thing. And something extra that you might have to buy depending on what camera you have is a specific cable. So this is the E3 cable since I have the Canon PowerShot SX6CHS. But as you can see on the back of this, depending on what kind of camera model you have, you might need to buy one of these extra little cables. But they're actually very fairly priced. Usually they're about five to ten dollars, so that's not too bad. And you do need one of these to actually hook the Pluto to your camera, so there might be other cables from Amazon that you could buy, but I'm not entirely sure about that. So to get started, all you have to do is on your iOS or Android device, just scan this little QR code and it'll immediately ask if you want to open it in the App Store. And then, once you actually have the app, all you have to do is follow these instructions. So the first thing you're going to want to do after you download the app is turn your Pluto trigger on and open the app. And then it'll immediately open to the shutter release. And then you're just going to want to go and click on the little tiny spinning circle and it'll blink a couple of times and then eventually your device will actually turn on and then once your device is connected it'll have a little tiny battery next to the shutter release and the three dots and so now I'm just gonna take you through all of the different functions that the Pluto trigger has so in shutter release mode you could just tap the play button to take a picture you can focus it by holding the button and then once you release it'll take a picture with hold, all you have to do is press on the play button and when you want your exposure to be done, all you have to do is let it go. Lock is once you press the play button once, it'll only stop once you press the play button again. Bold mode works the same on your camera, but it can extend the exposure time much longer than your camera can. The longest shutter that my camera has is 15 seconds and on here you can have it for as long as you want pretty much, which is so cool. On burst mode, obviously, you pick the number of exposures that you want your camera to take, and it'll take that amount. And lastly is timer, which again, it just extends what your camera can have as a timer, which is really cool so that whenever you're ready to take the picture, it'll take it. All of the other modes are in this little drop-down menu, and as you can see, you have the shutter release option, time lapse, HDR, star trail, video, timer, laser sound, light, lightning, infrared, droplet, aux, fusion, sound, vibrate, motion, distance, voice, smile, depth of field, sun position, ND filter, and starscape rule, which that is just so much, but so obviously with time lapse you pick the duration of how long you actually want your time lapse to go for, the amount of shots, the intervals, the delay, and everything like that. But on the bottom, it has different presets that you can pick from. So obviously, there's custom, standard, miniature, sunrise, sunset, which are the same, night scene, night sky, and cloud sky. And pretty much, that just makes it really easy depending on what you exactly want to go for. You don't have to try and do it all yourself. All you have to pick is one of the presets. And obviously, you can play around with everything here. You don't have to be in the custom to customize it, but those are just standard amounts that if you want to maybe see the clouds move a little bit, all you'd have to do is put it on cloud sky and it should very easily capture the clouds moving. The two little dots that are next to the play button I am still just learning how to use this too. I only got it two days ago. I'm not entirely sure what it's for, but when it's turned on, 
it goes really in depth for your time lapse so I still need to play around with this a lot but that looks so cool and then we have HDR which again I haven't really used but I've heard that a lot of people don't really like it they'd rather use the HDR on their cameras but again I haven't really gotten to play around with everything just yet so I'm gonna have to make that decision for myself and then you have Star Trail which is one of the things that I am most excited about so with Star Trail, you can obviously take a long exposure of the stars and it'll look just kind of like lines. If you've never seen a Star Trail thing, I'll leave a picture here. But it's super cool because you pick the amount of shots, the exposure time, the gap time in between each exposure, and the delay if you want there to be a delay. So that's going to be really fun to try out. And then you have video, which some cameras do not actually support this feature, but luckily mine does. So if you wanted to take a video, all you would have to do is set the duration and the intervals and the delay, and it'll just take it for you, which is super cool. And then you obviously have timer, which again, you can either have photo or video mode. With timer, you decide when you want it to start and when you want it to end and how many intervals you want in between the amount of pictures or video that it takes and then laser you just use the little laser that came with the Pluto trigger and you set it up so that it hits the left side of the Pluto trigger button and sound obviously when you make a sound it'll take a picture depending on how sensitive you want it to be so that's really cool light it's gonna see when the light changes whether it gets from darker to lighter or lighter to darker, that's when it'll take a picture. Lightning is one of the other things that I'm super excited to use with this. So pretty much you just set the sensitivity and when it senses that there was a lightning strike, it'll take a picture. From what I've heard, you just kind of have to play around with it until it starts actually taking pictures. But that's a really cool feature. My camera actually doesn't support infrared, so I can't really use this, so I can't really talk about it. Droplet is for if you have another accessory from Pluto Trigger, which this just allows you to take pictures of droplets from the valve that you can buy as an extra. Aux, I'm not entirely sure what it's for. And then Fusion, I'm not really sure what it's for. And then these smart sensors obviously are sound, vibrate, motion, distance, voice, and smile. So it'll sense when you smile and it'll take a picture or video voice. If it hears you say Pluto, it'll take a picture. Distance, depending on how long you want to go, it'll track that amount. Motion, if it senses that it's moving around, that's when it'll take a picture. Vibrate and sound are the same way. And then you have tools. With depth of field, you can change so, so much. And you can also control from your phone what your camera exactly is going to focus on. So obviously, as you can see, you pick how far away the subject is. So if you say 20 feet, and then you, you're going to put the aperture that your camera's at, the focal range that your camera's at, and then you're going to want to pick the camera itself. So I'm just going to find Canon PowerShot. So my camera actually isn't an option for this, but you basically just do that. And then at the top, it'll say the front is 18.6 meters, depth of field is infinity, and behind is infinity. So that's really cool. So sun position is really cool, but I have my location on. I don't want you guys to see where I am, but pretty much the sun position, depending on where you are, will tell you when the sunrise and sunset is. It'll tell you where the sun is right now, and that's just a really cool feature because it'll be able to tell you where the sun is. So if you wanted to track it or do a time lapse or something like that, it'd be really easy to. And then an ND filter is pretty much just for your camera if you're trying to take a picture. Um, I don't have an ND filter, so I can't really talk about that. But And then the starscape rule. So the starscape rule is pretty cool too, but I don't really know everything about that just yet. 
So that is pretty much the Pluto trigger. I'm gonna be including a bunch of photos that I take with it. And again, I can't really feature every single thing in this right now since I just got it two days ago. But if you guys want more videos about the Pluto trigger, please make sure to like and subscribe down below because I'm gonna be making so many videos about this. I'm just so excited to use it and to have it. I've always wanted a shutter release, but they've always been really expensive. So that's just why I'm super excited that Pluto Trigger sent me this. It has so many cool features and modes and no matter what camera you have, I'm sure that the Pluto Trigger is supported. I'm so excited to do more experimental photography and just be able to take pictures and videos that I've never been able to take before. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Comment any tips that you have if you have a Pluto Trigger or if you have a shutter release. What's your favorite feature to use with it? This is my first ever shutter release, so I'm so, so, so excited. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!